write the complex number in trigonometric form. So the first thing I like to do in these problems when we're asked to write in trig form is to do a rough sketch of the complex number. So there's the imaginary plane and this is the real part and this here is the, called the real axis and this is called the imaginary axis. And so they're both positive, so the complex number should be somewhere over here, you know. We'll travel this way by 4 square root of 3, and then travel up by 4. And that should put the complex number somewhere here. So we'll be looking for an angle, which we'll call theta, in a minute, and that's the angle we'll be looking for. Okay, so what is uh, trig form? Trig form looks like this. It's r times cosine theta plus i sine theta. So this complex number uh, should be equal to another complex number of this form. So now the next step is to find r. So r is given by the following formula. It's the square root of x squared plus y squared. So in this problem here, this is our x and this is our y. All right, so then we have the square root of, so x is four square root of three, and that's squared, and y is four, and that's also squared. So this is equal to the square root of, when you square this piece, you just square each of the factors, so you would get 16 times, and then the square root of three is three, plus, and then here you get 16, it's equal to 16 times 3 is 48, so we get 48 plus 16. So we get the square root of 64, so that's 8. Okay, so that's 8. So our r in this problem is 8. So let me go ahead and plug that in to what we have. So we have 4 square root of 3 plus 4i equals 8, that's our r, parentheses cosine theta, plus i sine theta. So now we just need theta. So most people, uh, when they're finding theta, they just use tangent. You can use the formula tangent of theta is equal to y over x. And then you can just plug in your x and your y and you know use a calculator or use memory. I personally like to do it a little bit differently. This way I'm not forced to memorize all the values for tangent. And this way I don't have to use the calculator most of the time. I like to distribute the 8, so we have 8 cosine theta plus 8i sine theta. And then use properties of complex numbers. Two complex numbers are equal only when the real parts are equal. So that would mean that 4 square root of 3 equals 8 cosine theta. And the imaginary parts are equal, so 4 equals 8 sine theta. So we have a system of equations. This is the same thing as having to solve this, except this will always work. Like, there's cases where this will fail, like if x is equal to zero, this will always give you the right answer if you do it this way. Solving this one for cosine, we'll divide by eight, so we get cosine of theta equals four square root of three over eight. So cosine of theta is equal to square root of three over two. Solving this one for sine gives us sine theta equals one half. And this is one of those special angles, and that angle is theta equals pi over six, just from memory. So if you memorize the ones for sine and cosine, um, you can always do it this way. So there's our theta. So now all we do is we plug it back into uh, the formula. So the trig form would be eight parentheses cosine of pi over six plus i sine of pi over 6. And this would be what's called the trig form of the complex number. Another way to write it, by the way, is 8 cis pi over 6. Cis stands for cosine i sine. I hope this video has been helpful.